of my past. As time went on, my hunger to discover the truth grew to the point. I founded the Paranormal Raider Force as a front beneath the growing monster. What you are about to hear are pieces of research I have done over the years. the forests all across the planet are constantly being sighted in fateful encounters. Skunk Ape, Yeti, Wild Man, Bigfoot, Wendigo, Yahweh. These names and more are used to describe a creature that is believed by some of modern science to be descendants of ancient gigantic apes. However, Others say that these creatures may not be of Earth as depicted through ancient texts. What are these mysterious, gigantic ape-like creatures? Where did they come from? How long have we known about their existence? My name is Dakota Franson, and through my research as a paranormal investigator, I have made several miraculous findings belonging to a world much farther than human understanding. One of those findings was a discovery that revealed the home of one of the most famous paranormal creatures known, Bigfoot. What you are about to hear is a collection of research combined with the theories from the minds of my paranormal team brought together to reveal even more mystery. Welcome to Journals of Supernatural Adventure. And, if you haven't guessed, tonight we reveal information on the mysterious Sasquatch. Is it the missing leap between man and ape? A descendant of ancient gigantic gorillas? Or are they a species belonging to somewhere else in the cosmos? These questions and more are to be answered now. January 7th, 1811, Western Alberta, Canada. Documented as one of the first Bigfoot experiences, a trader and surveyor for the Northwest Company attempted to cross the Mount Rocky Mountains just outside present-day Jasper, finds a set of unusual tracks. In his journals, he writes, I saw the track of a large animal, has four toes, about three to four inches long. The hole is about 16 inches long by 8 inches wide. He recalls in his later publishing, at first, he thought that it was the track of an old bear. But as I just described, the shaping was not correct. 1892 Conspiracy theorists would agree that U.S. presidents have had some involvement in supernatural projects. However, from what I told you all in a previous episode, that the president himself is not the head honcho when it comes to security clearance. With that being true, there is an exception every now and then about the supernatural and our national leaders. On a few occasions, the president has an encounter of their own with worlds beyond our imagination. One in particular that matches the subject tonight is Theodore Roosevelt's book, The Wilderness Hunter. In his book, Roosevelt recalls a story told to him from the frontiersman about one encounter during his travels at the Salmon River near present-day Idaho-Montana border. The frontiersman, referred to as Bowman, was out trapping with a partner among mountains dividing the forks of the salmon from the head of the Wisdom River, or present-day Big Hole River. 
He decided to go through a lonely pass to a small stream where several beavers were present. This particular area, however, had an evil reputation. As a year before, a lone hunter was killed and half eaten by an unknown beast. Unshaken by the tale, the two went on, passing through the meadows, grass, and woodlands. It was dusk when they finally reached camp, and to their surprise, when in their absence, something had been through the area. Tracks of the intruder were left, presumably that of a bear, but the two did not take too much attention to it. But later that night, Bowman's partner re-examined the tracks, only to say, Bowman, that bear was walking on two legs. Of course, Bowman did not believe this. So he went over to try to determine what could have left the marks. But at the time they saw this, it was too dark. Before long, they fell asleep, only to be awakened at the stroke of midnight by strange noises and what they described as a, as a foul, beast-like odor. They were awakened, and Bowman grabbed his rifle towards a dark shadow figure that it was attacking. This encounter, documented by Roosevelt, is actually considered one of the first alleged attacks by Bigfoot. But what else is there to these legends? Or after these brief messages... Have you or someone you know ever been in an abusive relationship with someone from your love life? In the pursuit of ending domestic abuse, the paranormal raider force has joined in the creation of a book made with the intention of showing young teens the red flags of a potentially abusive relationship to prevent further loss of life in the chase for love. You can send in your stories by falsifying any means involved with your struggle. If you wish to send in your story, please read the guidelines in the link provided in the episode description. Are you a resident of the Snake River Plain and love a good ghost story? Do you love to read about the stories of the supernatural events happening around the globe? Whatever your situation is, something is coming that will ease your hunger for the spookiest of tales. Coming soon, hauntings from the Snake River Plain. Featuring myself, along with stories of a lost cave, a possessed canyon, and a visit from mysterious strangers are only some of the stories you will find in this anthology by Idaho writers. Lock the door, turn off the lights, and enjoy these haunting tales. Learn more about this book by clicking on the link provided in the episode description. And welcome back. This his journals of supernatural adventure. Tonight, we talk about the mysterious Bigfoot. Are the encounters with these mysterious beasts a modern phenomena? If not, how long has humanity known about these monsters? The encounters I have mentioned are some of the earliest and most historic recorded by the white man. However, there are even more stories that reach farther than the legends of our settlement. There are legends passed down in several native tribes. One in particular are those passed down by the Sioux tribes in present-day Dakota states. Now in these legends, they actually treated Bigfoot, or what they called the Elder Big Brother, with respect, like he was of some sort of deity. They actually believe that its bear-like physique and human-like appearance gave him special purpose as he contained the knowledge of animals, and yet he held the consciousness of man. Several other native legends depict very similar encounters with what they called man-bears. But another thing about these so-called man-bears is that native legends state that they would come out of a moon that landed on earth then shortly after the creatures left the moon went back into the sky what does this mean it means that bigfoot has extraterrestrial connections 
In fact, several Bigfoot researchers have noted that in some instances, UFOs appear shortly after Bigfoot does. And if you trace that notion through ancient alien theory, we could place encounters with giants in ancient cultures as possible stories of Bigfoot-like creatures. Now before I continue on, I need to point something out. Today when we think of giants, we think of 50, 60 foot tall creatures, right? Usually humanoid. That is an image placed today with the legends of giants in various cultures. But think about how taller people are treated today. Oftentimes, one may joke around that they're a giant, right? Considering how rumors get spread around these days, misinterpretations of gigantic creatures that are really be about 6 foot to 8 feet tall are made out to be much larger. So, it is possible that the giants of our past, so to say, are smaller than actually pictured, but re they were referred to as giants simply because they were bigger than everybody else. Now speaking of giants in our past, there is one theory of Bigfoot's origins that actually allow for the phenomena to be more popular than the rest. It is a fact that a very similar, at least in alleged appearance, to Bigfoot actually existed millions of years ago. What is this ape? More after this brief message. Are you a fan of the Paranormal Raider Force and would like to show it off? Well now you can. The team has opened an online store with a variety of products specially designed by Dakota Fenson. Keep an eye open towards our online social networking pages for special codes to get discounts on your purchases. New products are added to the shop every third Sunday of the month. So if you're in the need of a paranormal fix from the team to take on the go, head to zazzle.com slash prflr to view our selection. And welcome back to Journals of Supernatural Adventure. Tonight, we reveal po a possible ancient ancestor of the Sasquatch, Giganthropithecus, an ancient ape believed to have existed up to 8 million years ago. It's the closest animal that fits the description of today's Bigfoot. It is quite possible that in a few million years, since its existence, it has evolved substantially to become, basically, a bigger, hairier version of humanity. But with the accounts of UFOs considered, that doesn't explain how Bigfoot can have amongst several supernatural abilities, such as levitating and disappearing without a trace. In fact, their young are even capable of these. How do I know this? Because I came face to face with a juvenile Bigfoot. It was July 3rd, 2011. I was on a camping trip with family up at Diamondfield Jack Campground, located near Magic Mountain Ski Resort. Little did they know it was on this very mountain I had seen a female Sasquatch at the mouth of a nearby cave just three years before. By this time, the cave was too overgrown by each brush to enter, so I thought I'd try a new approach, bringing the creature out. Late that night, I set up an area to lure out Bigfoot, and just in case I happened to miss it, I would be able to collect a foot casting. I laid a few pieces of chocolate on a tree stump that was just 20 feet away from my campsite. From behind me, I heard a slight rustling of leaves. I turned to look and saw a small shadow-like figure slowly approaching me. I froze with suspense. I had no clue what was going on. The glow of the nearby fire in my campsite let me get a better look at what was coming, revealing the juvenile. I jumped, seeing that what I was hunting was coming right at me. But without any effort, 
the little guy disappeared. I haven't seen another Sasquatch since that. That following morning, I was able to collect the foot casting of a much larger specimen. I estimate it to be about a size 24 of men's shoes. By using that estimate, it is very likely that the Sasquatch I encountered, or at least its mama, was about 7 feet tall. From this experience, I have been gathering information to form a theory about the Sasquatch, involving origin, behaviors, etc. When extraterrestrials, or quote-unquote gods, came to this planet, they discovered that it was rich with materials. Several humanoid species were already present in this time, on a mission for gold. They mixed their DNA with a humanoid that was already present to create several humanoid species that would function as worker bees. When the extraterrestrials received enough of what they were looking for, they left. However, more civilizations became aware of their project and found use for the creatures present on Earth. They worked together to form advanced spaces to live amongst the planet and decided to alter the creatures to create a more perfect specimen. This is how human evolution was given a speed boost, not like how it's explained in school. Each civilization added pieces of their own DNA to the mix, creating several humanoids until the perfect specimens resulted. Those experiments created two ideal species, Homo sapiens sapiens and Bigfoot. Once the ideal creatures were made, the quote-unquote gods allowed for natural evolution to take place. Humans and Bigfoot-like creatures lived amongst each other all across the planet. However, something happened. In some cultures, the giants that were once our friends were thrown out of society and their image was twisted into something demonic because they possessed powers we did not understand. They were hunted to near extinction. Kind of like how in the recent Justin Smeha incident. More on this incident provided in the link mentioned in the advertisements. To emphasize the point behind demonic accusations that the creatures faced, one must understand similarities between these entities. First off, in most encounters with the Sasquatch, eyewitnesses often describe a very harsh, foul smell, similar to that of sulfur, much how like demons are said to smell like. That is the first thought allows for the possibility of Bigfoot being described as a demon. However, there's one more piece of evidence that no one is considering until now. The calls of Bigfoot. Ever hear of the sounds of hell recorded in Siberia? Well, tonight, I happen to have a copy shown to me by one of my colleagues. Please take a listen in, but I must warn you, this is very disturbing. I will only play it for about 10 seconds. Again, this is very disturbing. play a recording of an alleged Bigfoot call. Now this particular recording is said to be the clearest that has ever been captured. Again, I will play this audio clip for only 10 seconds. Just imagine 
many of more of these calls put together and just had some screams of torture, then you have a pretty close match. The particular Bigfoot specimen that was in this recording is believed to be male. As for female recordings, their pitch to their call is actually much higher. However, when you think of hell torture, you think of violence. But the thing is, many Bigfoot are actually not that violent. In fact, most of the time, they mind their own business. You see them, they see you, you go your separate ways. Usually how it goes. But the Yeti, or Siberian Snowman, as it's sometimes called in the area, is said to be a lot more aggressive. Whether or not Bigfoot is actually a demon, I cannot tell. But either way, humanity was not very kind. Then again, our history shows that we have never been good with accepting difference. That has caused the deaths of many, just like it did with Bigfoot. With the numbers dwindling, they figured out how to stay elusive. They became stealthy. They became fast. Now it is possible that ETs offered up some of their technology to aid in survival. Or the ancestors that tossed in their pieces of DNA to help create Bigfoot are bringing specimens created from leftover bits of DNA as part of a repopulation program. Or it could be that Bigfoot has a close relative from another planet that has been aiding in their survival. Remember that photo from a Mars rover shown on several news media that showed a mysterious kind of reddish black figure? Compare that image to that of Bigfoot. You may just find that the two are oddly similar. Now I have a theory. This is one I've been t trying to toss around but also been trying to gain more evidence to support it. In Norse mythology, one branch of Yggdrasil, or the Tree of Life, is connected to a world known as Jotunheim. This world is said to be inhabitants by giants of rock and ice. With the notions I have brought up earlier in this episode, the concept of rock and ice sound like a way of classifying species, perhaps describing the color of fur the giants possess. The rock giants are the specimens of Bigfoot adapted to the forest. The ice giants are the species that inhabited colder terrain, perhaps like the Yeti from the Himalayas. If this is correct, then the planet we call Mars was already explored by an earlier civilization, Asgardis. And Jotunheim is where Bigfoot comes from. We will talk more about our theories about the Norse and their culture in a future episode. If you'd like to hear more information about the Bigfoot phenomena, I encourage you to check out Chris Allen's Monster Theater. Chris Allen is actually a friend of mine that allowed me to come on his show to talk about my experiences. He is a world-renowned country music singer in the band Chris Allen and Southern Thunder, as well as a Bigfoot researcher. Check his show out sometime. Every time his show comes on, he talks a little bit more about Bigfoot. He is actually where I get some of my information on how to hunt these gigantic creatures. Well, folks, we're running out of time. Tune in Saturday, September 29th, to hear about Alien Attack. Encounters with malevolent extraterrestrials over our history. Why are they hunting us? Why have they chosen sides in man's earliest conflicts? Is there a purpose to their ways? Where are the civilizations 
that tried to end our existence. Answers to these questions and more next time on Journals of Supernatural Adventure. If you want to hear more about the events mentioned in tonight's episode, click on the link by further information in the episode description to read about the advertisements mentioned in the show, events referenced to, and much more. For tonight, in honor of the Sasquatch, I offer this piece of advice. If a difference is shown, do not judge and attack. Learn and accept. If it causes no harm, there is no point in giving harm. Good night, everyone. You know what to do, eh, Mac? If you would like to know more about the work of the Paranormal Raider Force, be sure to visit their website at francinfiles.webs.com. If you would like to speak with Dakota Franson on your show, please visit the contact page on the PRF website to look for guidelines to request an interview. By clicking on the PRF Universe tab, you can see our work online at any time. You can also purchase merchandise designed by Dakota Franson at www.zezzle.com slash PRFlayer. If you are in the southern Idaho area and wish to have the Paranormal Raider Force investigate a claim of activity, be sure to check the contact tab on our website for guidelines on how to request an investigation. Follow that PRF anytime on Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus by either going on our links tab or by search for the team on your favorite online search engine.